Hi, welcome to our podcast, Just One More Page. Where it's never just one more page. Hey everybody, welcome back to Just One More Page. My name is Sam. My name is Morgan and... And we've hit our six month mark. Holy moly. I know, isn't that crazy? Wait, something else that's crazy is that, I don't know if you know this Sam, but what? my crazy niece is here. <laughs> Not my crazy niece, but my favorite crazy neat Catherine my favorite Catherine she is so funny I'm gonna take her book shopping and I know I'm not supposed to buy any books but I can buy her books right I feel like I'm on a book buying band so I feel like I can still buy her books you cannot physically go into a Barnes and Noble and not buy at least one book listen I have not the whole month of June I have not bought any books okay you should be the only books I have bought it's for this podcast. I have not bought any books. I feel like I'm doing my, like I'm doing the Lord's work right now and trying to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like whenever I go by a Barnes and Noble, I just cover my eyes. I'm like, don't look at it. And the reason, if you're wondering why I'm not buying any books this month, the month of June, is because my birthday is in July and I have a mindset of I want to buy a lot of books and I need to save up money. Like I want to buy so many books that the people up front are like, are you okay? Like, I want them to question my sanity. That's how many books I want to buy. But anyway, Sam, how was your weekend? Did you do anything fun? Uh, same old, same old. It is getting to be, like, 100 degrees outside now, and I'm, like, contemplating going to get, like, a $10 kiddie pool and filling oh, it up so, so I could, like, bathe in it because it's so, so hot out right now. I went to the pool with my friends, and uh, I, I love – be in warm weather and they they don't so it was really funny we got in the pool we're in the pool for maybe a half an hour and they all were like yeah i'm done so they all jumped out of the pool and hid in the shade like huddled underneath the street and meanwhile i'm in the pool reading my book floating around my floaty i'm like i am having the perfect day but a lot of my friends did get sunburned that day I was going to say, not all of us are blessed with skin that tans as beautifully as yours. Some of us turn into red lobsters. Yeah, that is that is true. Except, except <laughs> so I am mixed. And whenever in, I'm in the winter, I always like to joke that I'm like a very white Mexican. I mean, I am. I'm a white Mexican because my dad's half, my dad's white and my mom's Mexican. But when I don't have a lot of sun, I get very pale. So in the summer, I'm like, tan me, please. Let me get all the sun in. <laughs> But I don't know. Hopefully this summer you can come see me and we can go hang out by my pool and float in the pool and read books. Uh, even though I'm very scared about dropping my books in the water. Do you think there's waterproof books? No. You don't think so? We should invent no. that. We should invent that. No. I want to get one of those, um, you know, the they're like these boards that lay across your tub so you can like put your book up and stuff. I have one of those. Hey, do you have a tub that would fit that? Because I have one. I can give it to you. Um, I, I don't know how wide my tub is. Well, let me know because my tub does, my tub is like up against a wall. And so it has like nothing to connect with, if that makes sense. Mm. So if you want one, I'm pretty sure I have one and I will be willing to give it to you. Well, thank you. Cause then I can read in the tub. Cause I've been like sitting sideways. Like, cause I have my master tubs. The, 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 our listeners don't need to know this, but whatever. <laughs> our, my tub is very large. Um, my master ba- bathroom, which is weird to say because I actually own a house. Um, but I have to, like, sit sideways and, like, over the edge so I can read my book without fear that it's going to fall into the tub. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yeah, I want one so that way I can just sit there and read. Because I don't know why. Like, just sitting in hot water and reading, just, it's, it's relaxing. It's nice. It's very nice, except I'm afraid of dropping my book in the water. But anyways, so today, sorry about the side ran rant. What's the, what's I'm trying to say? The side rant. Sorry about the sorry yeah. word. It's the side rant. I was like, what's that word? Uh, we're going to be doing our six-month recap. We're going to be talking about, like, our favorite books. We're going to be talking about the podcast. And, yeah. So, Sam, can you believe it that so far we've read 18 books? Oh, my God. I know. After I, like, because I had said um, in the very first episode that um, I didn't read more than six books the year prior and now my Goodreads right now is sitting at like 24. And I knew most of them would be the podcast, but that's, that's incredible. Which means that we've been do we've read eight, like we've, we've done over 18 episodes. Yeah. I think we're at the 25th mark, 26th let mark. Me, let me, I have them all marked it. So we are, uh, currently we are on episode, go all the way up. We are on episode 
Oh, this is our 25th episode. It is 25th. Oh. Yeah, so we're, we're at the almost exactly midway mark of the year. That's, so it's the exact halfway point. That is crazy. That is so crazy. Is there anything about this uh, podcast that was, like, really difficult? Like, oh, well, hold on. First off, do you want to talk about why we started this podcast? Or Yeah, we could talk about why we started Why did we this. start it? Um, so you were reading, what was it, XOXO by, like, Axio or whatever, mm-hmm. and you were like, this book, um, I like, the, like, I don't know why you were telling me about it or whatever, and I was like, oh, I should read this book too, because we're, we're both K-pop fans, and then we didn't like the book, and we were very specifically, like, just talking about it the whole time, and then, I don't know, like, one thing led to another, and we were like, we should start a podcast, because we think we're hilarious, and now here we are, six months later, having, I think it would, it would, the idea was born in December, yeah. so it was about a month to get set up. Yeah, what was, and then, what was the hardest part, do you think? Or were, was there any fears that you had about starting the podcast? Um, keeping up with it was my biggest mm-hmm. fear. Um, I work really, really long hours on a very, very wonky schedule that's never consistent or at least at at the point that we started this it wasn't a very consistent schedule um but i i had a fear of like not being able to like meet the demands of trying to read a book in a specific amount of time and then be able to turn around and talk about it and then turn around and edit it and make sure it's up on time um i honestly felt like by february we would have like crashed and burned and mostly due to me because i didn't think i could keep up with the pace that we were going to be going um, but I think I found a really good flow and it took a lot, it took a bit of work. I was tired a lot, but I'm so glad we've kept up with it. Cause I, this is our child. I love this podcast so much. This is our baby. Um, so for me, it wasn't like so much of being afraid of doing it because I don't need sleep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> says me who takes like 10 hour naps, but I don't need sleep. Uh, no, I think the thing that I was really afraid about is, and I think I even talked to you about it was, you know, I have a um, speech impediment. So mm. I was really scared about putting myself out there and talking. And I think you kind of told me, like, that you need to just do it, that you can, like, inspire other people who have a birth defect like I do, uh, which is I have – if you're curious, I have – I was born with a cleft lip. And mm. so it kind of enables me to not – to have a little bit of a speech impediment – it is a lot better now as an adult. It's a lot better than when I was a kid. But I was always really afraid of how people would kind of view me and view my voice. And because I feel like a lot of times when I talk to people and I mispronounce words, they kind of view me as, well, stupid. And so I was afraid that they would like hear us talk and be like, I don't want to listen to them because they don't know anything. And I'm just like, I just can't pronounce certain words, but I promise you I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> but another hard thing though was for me personally uh is the editing i hate editing sam i hate editing i if i could get rid of anything in in this podcast it would be editing like i hate it it, it takes like five hours five hours for me to edit a podcast just because i get distracted so easily it's so bad like i'll be like i'm editing editing oh no i clicked the sims now i gotta play the sims for three hours like oh no it's, so bad but what is the best part so far of doing this podcast um i two two things one um just because you and i don't live near each other um it's it's kept us talking it's always given like we've always had reasons to talk but i think they were always very sporadic and now it causes us to have to talk every single i have to like i want to talk to you obviously you're stuck with me now (laughs) but like it, it gives us something to, like, work on, work toward. Um, it it just keeps us constantly talking, and we're discovering new books and different things that we like. Um, and then the other thing that um, I really have loved about this podcast is it's kind of, like, reignited my love for reading. Oh. Like, I've always been a reader. I've always loved reading, but now I'm reading way more than I used to. I feel like I'm back in high school again, and we're just... 
every night instead of watching TV or playing on my phone, I always have a book in my hand. And I, I miss those days. I was nostalgic for those days and I thought I would never get them back. And now they're back and I'm so happy. It's just giving me a good quality of life. Yeah, I've noticed recently on Goodreads that you've been reading more books. And like, you know how we, like, if you go on your feed, you can see books that people have finished. And I've noticed mm-hmm. that you finished like some books that weren't podcast related. And I think that's awesome because it is really hard to kind of get back into reading once you stop. But I think that's awesome. Do you have any goals, though, for, for this podcast or, like, book-related? Like, what's your goals? Um, so, I mean, I, we had a bunch of numbers goals and stuff, mm-hmm. but um, I, I just want to finish out this year. I'm just excited to just my, – my biggest goal is just to make it to December and, and see where we're at. Um, I, I know we talked about going to, like, podcast conventions. We want to go to Y'all West. We want to do all of these things and stuff. And I still want to do those. But my base goal now is we made it to six months. Let's keep going. Let's let's keep mm-hmm. the momentum going and see where we are in another six months. Um, I mean, we're I, I feel like we're doing awesome. We've got almost 450 downloads at the time of recording this episode. Um, and I think we're doing amazing. Yeah. So I just want to finish this out. Mm-hmm. I think we're doing pretty good, too. My end goal, I mean, because I think our goals in the beginning of this was that we wanted, like, a thousand TikTok followers. We hit that. We hit our Instagram one. We hit our, um, our, like, I think we hit our podcast goal of how many listeners we want. But my goal yep. is, oh, we also got an arc. That was one of our goals too. We, we got our first arc from this, uh, from NetGalley. But my goal is to go to a convention and to like talk to someone who's listened to our podcast. I would probably, oh, I would probably pass out. So it was like, Hey, are you just one more page? I'd be like, no. And I would run, <laughs> I would run and hide behind a trash can. <laughs> like, don't talk to me. <laughs> so, um, you made those sweatshirts um, that you get the sweatshirt oh. you gave me for my birthday with the just one more page and stuff. I think it's kind of cool that um, when we wear it, like people talk to us mm-hmm. about it, and then it's like, yeah, I've run that. Like that's mine. I do this, and it just it, it's like this pride I have in this podcast of like I do this thing. Come listen to us. I'm so excited. Yeah, like um, I. It just makes me happy. It does make me really happy. Like it's something. It's definitely our baby. Something I'm definitely proud about and something I definitely love and I'm really glad that we started this podcast I think that I am really happy that we've lasted this long we haven't I think there was one time that we missed a Sunday upload and that wasn't even our fault it was Spotify's fault because they wouldn't Mm. upload our episode but it was like up and ready to go it just wouldn't post but in reality we have not met missed a Sunday yet yeah, have, and there was a couple times where we were we were going to be close at missing a Sunday. Mm-hmm. There's been times where I've deleted the audio and had to start all over again. <laughs> oh my god, that was yeah. We recorded a whole episode, and then the where how we record our audio and everything. Her uh, her program crashed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we it took us what three hours to try and figure out how to get because we we didn't record till almost like nine o'clock at night that night. Yeah. Yeah, it took forever, and it was honestly, I was like screaming when it did it. You just saw my face when I realized that the program wasn't working. I wanted to cry. I was just silent. But to talk about some book related questions, what have you been? What is your favorite book from this podcast so far that we did? Mm. Maybe what's your favorite book that you've done through this podcast, and then also what's your favorite book that you read personally that is not to do with this podcast? So, um, as far as like the podcast is concerned my favorite one actually is the second book that we read which was dark rise by c.s Paca. um and i'm like super pumped for the next one to come out which i don't think will come out till next year but i'm like super duper looking forward to that one um as far as favorite books i've read off the podcast mm-hmm. castles in their bones what's it about so that is about uh three princesses who are triplets and their mom has married them off to the three princes in the adjoining um like countries like there's like like four countries and she's married the girls off to them so they can infiltrate their kingdoms and destroy them from the inside so that way their mom can take it over and become like the ultimate empress um and there's like politics and intrigue and there's there's three different storylines going on but it's so good and you get to that ending and you're just like oh my god (laughs) i've done a couple tiktoks on it um just because i love this book so much and i'm i'm i can't wait till the next one comes out because that ending to that book was just so good Mm mm-hmm and you kind of know 
I don't know how to explain this without spoiling it, but you kind of know what's going to happen, but you don't know why it's happening until it's explained in the very last chapter of the last three pages of the book, and you're just, your whole mind is just blown. Mm. And it's so good. It's so good. That's awesome. Um, For me, I'm the same way. I really loved... uh, Dark Rise by C.S. Pax. And also, surprisingly, you're going to make fun of me, I really did like um, Find Me by Ashley N. Ro- N. Rostek, which is a book that was recommended by a TikTok user. And it's a spicy book, and I don't normally the read it. The third one comes out August 31st. That's so exciting. And we're going to read it. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, like, honestly, I honestly didn't think that I was going to like Find Me, because I was like, okay, it's spicy. It's also reverse harem, and I was like, no way am I going to like that. But it was, like, it reminds me a lot of, like, Quizilla mm-hmm. <laughs> days. And if you don't know what Quizilla, day, Quizilla is, then we're dating ourselves. It's kind of like what pad, but back in the day. Just look it up. It was like, that was literally my teenage years, just spending all every day on Quizilla. But some of the books that I read that were non-podcast related was actually a poetry book called Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Trisha Marti, which is a poetry book that uses mythology of the goddesses to talk about issues such as self-love, sexuality, romance, platonic love. Um, it also talks about um, sexual assault too just so you know there is artwork throughout the novel and it looks like they're photo for like photographs and then people someone writes on it with a pen and sign out my friend got the same book as me and she thought someone wrote all of her book and i was like no it's supposed to be like that and she got so mad about it she was like i need to return this book because someone wrote all over it all over this book and i was like no it's supposed to be like that but (laughs) some of my favorite um poems from this book is uh you do not exist to prove anything to anyone they made a monster of medusa as well hated how loud her trauma was couldn't believe she had the audacity not to take it lying down they made a war ground of her body so she made one on theirs which i absolutely love um Another book I really loved was the Fence series, which is a graphic novel by C.S. Pax and illustrated by Joanne the Mad. And there was also a novel that goes along with it that is called Striking the Distance by Sarah Reese Brennan that I absolutely loved. The Spanish Love Deception by Alina Arms Armaris, which uh, which is like a really popular book on TikTok. But Sam, I'm telling you, this book made me giggle so hard at work. I loved it. I loved it so much. It had like the fake dating trope, which you know what? I love my fake dating tropes. <laughs> and then I recently just re-read, reread the Percy Jackson series that I, you know, obviously it's Percy Jackson. I obviously loved it. Mm. But like I also realized that it was, although it made me laugh a lot, it was at times very cringy. And I was like, wait, did I really like this book? Or did I just like the Greek mythology? I don't know. But anyways, I'm really excited to see this as a Disney Plus show, or I think it's a show, coming up out soon so i'm super excited Mm. about it but what was your least favorite book of of a book that you read for the podcast and the book that you read personally um okay so book that i read for the podcast that's a hard one (laughs) it doesn't have to be one it can be multiple okay so uh number one uh we all fall down um (laughs) if you don't know why and you've read this book please go check out the last episode because Whew, is that mm, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Cafe Con Lychee was a little bit of a disappointment too, because mm-hmm. um, I was expecting a lot more out of the book than I got. Um, and then I think that was pretty. Much, uh, Message Not Found was also one that I I don't remember hating it, but I also remember not like it wasn't like my favorite book either. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those those three were probably like my top three. Like, eh, mm-hmm. not the biggest fans of it. Mm. Um, what about personally? Was there any books that you've read this year that have not been for the podcast that you don't like? Um, not really. Um, I, I've gotten very good at kind of picking my own books. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did read um, Once Upon a Broken Heart. I am excited to read the next one, but at the same time, it wasn't like as great as I thought it was going to be. Oh, and you want to hear my faux pas mistake that I made? Sure. Um, I read an entire book that was the second book of the series. How did you not realize? Because there's no numbering and they didn't say anything. <laughs> and uh, Okay, so I read Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. Um, 
Love the book. This book was great. I had a great time with it. It was fantastic. It's definitely 18 plus once you get to the end of that book. Mm -hmm. But um, they were talking about like nicknames they had for each other. Mm -hmm. And they were like these cutesy nicknames. And then they were texting about things that happened prior. And I don't remember when they met each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm so confused. Mm -hmm. It's the second book in the series. I didn't realize that it was the second book. I thought it was the first book. Yeah, no, it's the second book in the series. So it's uh, the first book is um, one sister's love story, and then the second book is the other sister's oh. love story. Um, and you meet the second sister and the second love interest in the first book, and then the next one is like a continuation. Well, talking about that, Arthur, I just recently picked up one. Uh, recently, I pre ordered this book, so I did not order this book for my non my june book band i or- pre-ordered it a while ago but it's like Excuses. listen i did not buy it i bought it the month before okay pre-order it doesn't count but anyways it, i forgot what it's called it's like my killer vacation and i got it because i thought like i was like oh the title looks really cute really like summery and like it's a murder mystery sounds really interesting and then i got it and i was like why does this say like a new spicy mystery and i like messaged you i was like i love it how i choose spicy books by accident you're like uh that arthur is known for spicy books i was like how am i supposed to know (laughs) (laughs) and there's like an inside joke at my work that i just read spicy books constantly but i don't and like it's so funny whenever i do read spicy books by accident my co-workers are like sure sure morgan i'm like no i promise you oh my goodness but for me uh my least favorite books were of course you know we all fall down because obviously and also love from scratch by caitlin hill because Mm. i wanted a cute cooking love story and i did not get that um but my least favorite books that i read personally i don't really have one um i uh, I like all the books. I guess if I have to say one, it'd be like The Gravity of Us, I think it's what it's called, by Phil Stapper, just because it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I rated it three mm. stars, but it wasn't like bad. It's just not what I wanted so far. Um, but is there any books that you're really excited about coming out? Um, okay, so uh, one of the ones that we're actually going to be reading for the podcast, which is that Violet Made of Thorns, I'm super duper excited about that one. I've requested it on NetGalley. They have not accepted it yet, and I want to read it so bad. And then um, my favorite book from last year is a book called These Hollow Vows, mm-hmm. and the next one is coming out next month, and I am pumped i've already pre-ordered it it's going to be here the day it releases i don't care what we're reading for the podcast that book is going on the top of my list i am reading it i'm so excited for it i can't wait it's a duology so it'll be the last book Mm. in the series and i am so excited Mm -hmm. i um really am excited because there are so many good books are coming out the second part of the year mm-hmm. uh so there's one book that i really want to read for our podcast but I'm, I'm not sure how it's gonna like fit into our schedule it's called the american roommate experiment by elena armis who wrote the spanish love deception which i talked about before this is is a romance novel following this girl named rosie who is staying at her friend's apartment who just so happens that she lent the apartment to her very hot cousin who rosie has been stalking on instagram because you know we've all been there we've all done that <laughs> and Rosie is a struggling romance novel per- novelist and her friend's cousin decides like hey what if like we go on dates and you can get inspiration and it's supposed to be super cute super romantic and the cover is super cute and I'm like I just want to read it and another book that I absolutely loved it or that I want to I can't wait to read is Never Getting Back Together by Sophia Gonzalez, which actually we got this arc from NetGalley. It's not coming out till December. And when I saw that we got this arc, I screamed because I was like, I've been wanting to read this since like whenever I realized it was she was coming out with another book because Sophia Gonzalez is one of my favorite, favorite writers. But this one's about a girl who's going on a reality TV show with her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend. And it's kind of like The Bachelor, but her boyfriend's The Bachelor. Her ex-boyfriend's The Bachelor, and it's all his exes. It's so awkward. But it's like second part of love, I guess, or second chance at love kind of thing. But mm-hmm. anyways, it gets really awkward because the girl who he cheated on with, or the girl who he cheated on her, on her, I guess, if that makes sense, is mm-hmm. um, her roommate. But uh-huh. yeah, dun, dun, dun. but it's like... Uh, I'm assuming it's a sapphire novel, so I'm really excited about it. Um, but some other books I'm really excited about is the the Love Match by Parik 
Prinka Talisman. I was born for this by Alice Osman, A Tale of Two Princess by Eric Geron. Fence Volume Four or Volume Five, I'm sorry, Rise by C. S. Pax, The Sun Bear Trials by Aidan Thompson, and Self Made Boys by Anne Marie McGlure. Love Me by Ashley and Rostek. So we all know I want to read that. Oh yeah, August thirty first. Yes, I, I listen. Not not to try and use our uh, TikTok for evil, but I've been trying to comment on a whole of her stuff to low key try and get an arc for us, and it's not working. <laughs> Be like, please give us an arc. We just want to read it. I just want to know what happens next because there's actually a fourth. Yeah, book. I saw that. I saw that when I was going to her her site. I was like, what do you mean? There's another book after this. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the last two books I, want, I can't wait to read is "This Is Why They Hate Us" by Aaron H. Akrives, a- and lastly, "How You Grow Wings" by Rima. On Satet. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. I'm like, I have so many books I want to read that that I feel like it's a lot. But I'm really excited for all these books that are coming out. And I'm excited to read them. Um, but, but another thing I forgot to ask you is, how has your reading schedule changed on books, from reading books? So I was, um, I was worried that it was going to make me hate reading. Oh, what? Really? So there's, when you take a hobby and you turn it into like your main focus, like that's your, we're reviewing books, we're reading books very, very quickly, we're just trying to get through them, Um, especially books like the ones that we absolutely hated and stuff. I felt like I was just going to burn myself out with reading and that I was just going to hate it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like you, when you take a hobby that you love and you turn it into like almost like your job, your 100% focus, it can sometimes take the the love and the um, passion you have for it and turn it into just sheer hatred. Mm-hmm. Um, because now you're not doing it for the love of it, you're doing it for a goal. And I, I felt like I was just going to absolutely hate reading at the end of this and that it wasn't going to turn into like reigniting my love for it. So I'm very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So how, like, how do you, how do you like read your books? Like, do you feel stressed out reading them? Because sometimes we choose books that are, like, just coming out. Um, so I've I've gotten to the point of I look at the page count and I kind of start marking the pages. Of, so, like, if it's, like, a 300-page book, it comes out on a Tuesday. We're recording on a Saturday. I'll be like, I have to read 100 pages by this time, the next 100 pages by this time, the next 100 pages by this time. Mm-hmm. Now, the 100 isn't, like, a hard stop. Like, I can keep going. But the 100 is, like, the minimum I have to read to keep up. Mm-hmm. Um, because then we still have to write notes. Because I'm one of those people that I read a book and I get to the end of it and I'm like, I really like that book. And then you're like, why did you like that book? And I go, I don't know. <laughs> so I have to make sure that I'm I'm reading to review and writing notes and I have to make sure I read at um, I have a certain point where I'm done with the book so that way I can go back and like actually go through it and write my notes and remember kind of what happened and the characters and stuff because otherwise the whole podcast is gonna be like I really like this book why it was just a good book I had a few good moments thank you bye yeah I mean honestly it takes me forever to write my notes I write notes my notes are usually two to three pages long and I always have to like just think like why like why did I not like this book or why did I like this book is there anything I really want to talk about um but for me I don't for I don't know if this is shocking, Sam, but a lot of times for the podcast, if we have to read a book in three days, I'll just buy the audio book and listen it, listen to it in th- three hours because usually I listen to my podcast at 2.2 speed. <laughs> yeah. See, but you, you have the ability to um, listen to it at work. Yeah. I'm not supposed to, um, but... But your boss is awesome and she loves My you. boss doesn't... Um, yes. Yes, but I also do a really good job at my work, and um, mm-hmm. I can still hear everyone around me, and it's not like I'm ignoring anyone. But um, I don't know; it, it can be really stressful at times, especially when I'm like, especially when I'm like, I have to finish reading this book. I'm really stressed out, and I'm like, I, I got to write my notes, and like sometimes it can be very overwhelming too, especially when we're mm-hmm. trying to figure out like, okay, this book is coming out Monday. We when are we going to be able to record? When are we going to be able to edit? So it can be really stressful. But thankfully, you know, we kind of got the hang of it. We're kind of making it work. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think the first month or two was a little bumpy just because, like, we're, we're brand new to all of – I mean, you you had edited podcasts before um, because you edited for your friends. Mm-hmm. But it's different when it's your own. 
Um, and then especially doing it with another person and we both have weird schedules. Um, cause there's days where I don't get home till 10 30, 11 o'clock at night and have to wake up at 5 30 AM just to go back and do it again. Anyway. Um, uh, but I feel like we've found our stride. Yeah, definitely. We definitely uh, found our stride, but I actually made a list of, uh, sp- like books, uh, superlatives, supplier- like, you know, how, like in high school where it's like the best dress. The worst dress, whatever. I kind of made that, but book themed. So oh I thought that we could answer them. <laughs> okay. okay. So the first question is the book that made you cry the most. Uh, you've reached Sam. What made me cry? Yeah. That 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 last voicemail, I was sobbing. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, it was. Ugh. That literally made me cry. I wanted to sob. Like, I hated reading this book. Because it, like, it was like the same thing of reading, like, They Both Die at the End. Where I'm like, I know mm-hmm. something sad is going to happen, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Okay, next thing. The book with the best cover. Message Not Found had a really pretty cover. It, di- it did have a really gorgeous cover. Um, I like Message Not Found. The Gilded One, for me, was really pretty, too. And mm-hmm. uh, Dark Rise. I love the yeah. hardcover version of it, like the yeah. the the gold in it and everything. There's actually a girl on TikTok. She sells a book cover, not book covers, but she'll she'll um, paint the spot, not spine, the pages. I guess if that makes sense. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's called like Dazzling Books. I think that's her website, and she has one for Dark Rise, and I want it so bad, but sold out. And I was like, but it looks so pretty. <laughs> um, so, the book that has the most interesting plot line. Not, like, not a book that you maybe not liked, but, like, like just a book that has an interesting plot line. Mine was Dark Rise and You Reached Sam. Yeah, You've Reached Sam had a good one. The Gilded Ones had a really good storyline, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. They It did have a really good storyline. Is that the one you're going to choose, The Gilded One? Yeah, I think The Gilded Ones is the one I'm going to choose. Okay. So, the book that made you giggle the most... Left from Scratch had had some good giggly moments. I, thought, I honestly thought you were going to say K prom. Uh, nah, Love from Scratch. Love from Scratch. I was going to say Find Me. <laughs> but I, oh yeah, because <laughs> I, I, that had some giggly moments, but for different reasons. What? And, and mostly because I'm like, I'm a child. <laughs> I I was giggling because I thought it was cute. Like, I thought there was cute scenes. I'm just like, oh, no, what are we getting ourselves into? I, I You're probably giggling over the spicy scenes. I was skipping uh-huh. the spicy scenes. <laughs> oh, lame. Go back and read nah. the spicy scenes. Learn, learn, learn something about yourself. No, thank you. Okay, so um, the plot line, plot line that could have been done better. We all fall down. Mm-hmm. I wrote down Love from Scratch and the non-family or no family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the book that you wanted to DNF the most. We all fall down. <laughs> yeah. We, By chapter two, I was ready to chuck the yeah. book across the room. The same thing. Seriously, we all fall down. Uh, the book that catfished you the most. Ooh, The Woman in the Library. Oh, yeah. I wrote The Woman in the Library. I also wrote Message Not Found. Uh, mm. uh, no family and we all fall down. And lastly, the book that you will read again. Find Me by Ashley Rossensteck. Really? I wrote down Once Upon a K-Prom because I feel like I need to give that a second chance. And also, of course, Daughter of the Moon. (laughs) I'm going to reread Dark Rise, but that's because I can't remember books that I've read prior to save my Mm -hmm. life. And it probably be closer to when the second book comes out is when I'll reread Dark Rise. I need to reread it too. I think I looked, I tried looking up to see when the second one was coming out, but there's no information on that. Yeah, it doesn't even have a title yet, but I still have marked it as want to read. Mm -hmm. It just says uh, Dark Rise book two. Mm -hmm. And if there is a book that you could recommend to anyone, one book. What would it be for anyone to read? Oh, for anyone to read? Castles and Their Bones. Castle and Bones? Hmm. Mm. I would say, um, I don't know what I would say. What's a book that I really read that this year that I liked? I don't know. I've read so many books this year. Um, but for podcast-wise, I would say Dark Rise because I absolutely love Dark Rise. But mm-hmm. for a book that um, maybe uh, that I've read personally, I would have to say maybe... Mm, I do not know. Spanish love, Spanish love deception. I say that. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard good things about. It's that such one. a good book, Sam. It's such a good book. Um, so I don't have anything else to yeah, add. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if you've been listening for a while for us, thank you. We really appreciate y'all listening to us because we thought we'd put this out into the world and like nobody would come listen to us. Mm-hmm. Um, we were like, if we get 
50 downloads by the time we hit our six month mark like we'll be super duper happy about that and we are at over 400 like that's incredible um so like thank you guys so much for listening to us thank you for following us on tiktok yeah. following us on instagram like we this is amazing it's um it's very crazy and like i wish that like i could talk to people who listen to our podcast if that makes sense me too like i want to have a code word like if you listen to our tiktok just write down like mango in the tiktok comments or like in our comments <laughs> of our video so i know that you listen to our podcast or something but if you do like this podcast and you do want to support us feel free to rate us five stars because on Spotify um, because that helps boost our podcast and get more people to check us out. We do have a TikTok, like I said before. It's called Just One More Page. And we also do have a Instagram called Just One More Page Official and a YouTube channel called Just One More Page and a Facebook group called Just One More Page. And yeah, we want to thank you guys so much for supporting us. It really means the best that we can read books together and talk about books and not only build this amazing community, but also for a way for me to be closer to my best friend. Aww. I'm being all sentimental. <laughs> oh, don't make me cry. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. We appreciate all of you. We love all of you. Thank you for dealing with our shenanigans. And we will see you next Sunday when we are talking about Our Cricket Hearts by Melissa Albert. So have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Bye. Have a good day.